Hey there. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Uh, sorry for the tardiness here. So today we have some phenomenal stuff going on. Um, here towards the, the end of the show, I would like to walk you guys through the Divine I Am activation and also share with you um, possibly another new tool of releasing. Um, but uh, also would like to offer a, um, a discount code for one of my favorite tools of the day, which is the two inch harmonizer ring. Um, two inch harmonizer ring, pretty phenomenal. Hey Leon, hey April. Well, cool, we got uh, people from all over today. Just checking in to see who's all here online live. So thank you guys for being here, those of you that are live here today with us. Um, gosh, from everywhere, Albuquerque, Philippines, Texas, UK. Um, so again, be offering a coupon code um, for you guys for this two inch harmonizer ring. Um, again, it's kind of my, I'm going to do a favorite tool of the week and this is definitely one of my favorite tools. It's heavy enough that, uh, you know, it's, it's tangible and you can use it for all the purposes, whether it's electromagnetics for healing with yourself or connecting for using with your water, your supplements, all the fun stuff. So this two inch harmonizer ring, uh, they're usually 32 bucks, um, with this coupon code that's good for like 24 hours. Uh, just use the coupon code BUZZ, B-U-Z-Z, -Z, and I will type it right here in the chat. That is the coupon code for the day. It's only going to be for 24 hours, so, um, and that'll get this ring here for 20 bucks, which is a heavier duty one. Anyway, um, I was going to try to give away a free one today, but I have not been able to get in. Yeah, I need to sit with my business manager and my shop foreman and all that before they let me give away things that's why i'm not allowed to do a lot of business things because i always gave all my stuff away um you know but we have 25 employees we need to keep going so anyway um today well let's begin in the heart space so just imagining within the physical heart, your light, connecting heart to heart with the earth, breathing in that light of the earth into the heart. Connecting heart to heart to the heart of creation, breathing in that light into the heart. The third breath, bringing both energies together within. Release, dropping into the heart, becoming grounded, connected. And there we are. All right. So for today, um, those of you who are here on live, uh, please do drop your questions here in the questions tab. And um, I'm trying to think, we've only had a couple of questions here that came in. Um, one of them is more personal style question that um, I'll get back to somebody on that one. The other one was, uh, please demonstrate how to bend the harmonizer ring to wear around the neck. Um, and I know last week I said that I was going to make a video for the harmonizer ring, which is this one here, so that you can bend it so that it's like the collar ring so that it fits around the neck. Um, not really set up here with camera and everything to be able to show you that well at, at this time during the webinar. But I promise I will make you make the video for bending this harmonizer ring into a collar ring. So um, here, probably Sunday, I will sit down and do some videos and we will do that one. Because, um, yeah, this harmonizer ring is pretty phenomenal to wear around the neck. Um, you know, when you're wearing it around the neck, it's going to, you know, it's going to align everything because you're within that column. Um, increases blood flow to the brain and otherwise it's 
kind of like wearing it anywhere else on the body. And of course, kind of like when you're wearing something. A little bit technical difficulties here today. That's why I was late. Um, <laughs> all right. So as we were talking, and you know, Leon mentioned here, mental clarity. <laughs> yeah, that it does help with. Um, so anyway, we'll make a video here sometime this weekend and get out on bending that harmonizer ring. Um, and let's see. Any other questions then? We'll go to the questions tab. All right, do you feel the harmonizer ring could become the new cell tab? So, you know, anytime that we're twisting the wire now that I'm twisting wire, most of the times with the golden fire tools, I'd say, yeah, just about all the times with the golden fire tools, that harmonizer template is wanting to be in there as well. So we put that harmonizer template in with the golden fire. But the thing about that, um, and Leon's asking about if the harmonizer ring could become the new cell phone tab, it's just that um, not everybody is ready for the chalice and the harmonizer. Um, some people still are in the game of duality. Um, and so the harmonizer ring is very much, as well as the chalice, it's very much there taking us out of that duality matrix. And for those who are very steeped into and want to play in duality, or maybe as part of their soul path to still be in duality, uh, that doesn't feel right. But, um, you know, those who still want to be in duality are not going to really necessarily like the harmonizer ring. But when we're making the tools now, basically, we are not only infusing everything with the chalice energy um, that is underlying. So basically, you'll get the cell phone tabs of golden fire. So no matter what, that golden fire will always be there. But if it is something that is in your highest and best good and your soul allows in, the harmonizer energetics is going to come through. Same with the chalice. So instead of, we're making it a multi-layered tool, these golden fire rings. So basically, um, golden fire generators, whatever it is, the water rings even, um, there is that harmonizer now that is in an undercurrent there. It, it's, it's in the field. So that if that's something that you allow in, your soul does, or that is in your highest and best good, that harmonizer will come through. So that's going to help us from having to remake all the tools because, you know, we really don't want to have to change up all of our tools every year when something new comes in. So, yeah, good question though, uh, Leon, about that. Uh, Jumbo, can I use the nine and a half inch harmonizer ring to cleanse and charge crystals and other objects? Yes, so I love this harmonizer ring. Um, not only is it phenomenal for crystals, um, for amplifying, for charging, for clearing, um, but also with water and especially with sound. Um, loving it with sound. We have a gentleman, a uh, new distributor, who is working with the tools with sound. And what he says about the harmonizer ring is that um, because he's very sensitive to, to music um, and he just says that it makes it feel more, more in person, that it's more live, that, that more of the essence of the person comes through in the music, um, you know, as far as the vocals, the energy, all of that. 
And so, yeah, the harmonizer ring is great for everything, all purposes. Um, so yeah, I definitely suggest this for all purposes, crystals, water, all of that. Uh, JR, how tall is the column from each of the nine inch harmonizer rings? That's a good question. We see these things shining almost infinitely. Um, to me, what it looks like to me is that it's showing me right now that is I'm holding this, that this goes out and it kind of dissipates about the same space as the atmosphere of the earth dissipates, that it goes out into space um, so on this physical third density reality electromagnetic plane, um, we see it going down into the core of the earth and going clear out in space. Um, and of course it's, it kind of gets a little it gets to be not as strong. Um, it it kind of starts to taper off, but yet that field is still there. Um, it just it just tapers off. Gosh, how to really say that? Kind of like how when you're right in the epicenter of the ring, that you can feel it the most tangibly, but yet you can still feel it when it's above your head as well. Um, it's just more tangible right in that that epicenter um, Kind of like when you have a Generator like a golden fire generator um, It has a taper off point as well Hopefully that answers the question um, April asks, can we do an activation? Yes, totally um, here at the end um, We're going to be doing the divine. I am activation so it's that's i've been doing a lot of classes here a lot of workshops at the at the events i've been to and um i feel pretty confident on now being able to hold that space to to walk people through that activation um tam asked can i use the divine i am taurus to build ascension pyramid without the cosmic sun disk yes yes you can so the um the Divine I Am Taurus is perfectly suitable within the Ascension Pyramids. Now, the one thing, Tam, about that is, is the Ascension Pyramids, and I would suggest a harmonizer ring with it. Um, the Ascension Pyramids are built to have that 8-inch eight cosmic sun disk right within, um, but you can still use that other disc, the um, the Divine I Am Taurus, and it can sit anywhere. It does not have to sit here on the cradle, on this wire cradle here that we have with this cable. Um, that Divine I Am Taurus can sit at the base of it. You can place it anywhere within that pyramid structure or on top, however, and it is going to be then still creating that field of neutrality everything that the ascension pyramid is um so you know we're just gosh we have a custom order of yeah you know, usually we don't do custom orders but this one's kind of a different situation we're making a cosmic sun disc for a gentleman um the 26 inch one and we're just going to create the divine i am taurus out of that 26 inch one so it's hard to say where we're going to be going. I've been kind of thinking about that the past couple of days too on what we're going to be doing with the Tauruses because this divine I am can take place of that cosmic sun disk. Um, so not sure where we're going with all that, but to answer the question, yes, you can use the divine I am Taurus in place of the cosmic sun disk for the pyramids. Um, Monica, what do you feel is best for the lower back pain? Um, You know what comes to mind right away is the uh, is the harmonizer ring, um, but also that divine I am Taurus is a pretty 
phenomenal one for working with the physical but the harmonizer ring is also one that is very much for working with the physical um and that's that's the beauty about the the harmonizer rings is that they're going to be that that very much that bridge that blender between all electromagnetic physical and that space where the chalice is that crystal clear pure light so to me working with the physical um the divine i am taurus is phenomenal or even the harmonizer rings uh jumbo in the product description it says there's a pyramid that forms out of the harmonizer ring how big is the pyramid and does it form from both sides of the ring so yes you know when we gosh when i was twisting up the wire creating that very first harmonizer ring i was seeing this pyramid it's about the size of energetically it was presenting the size of of the ring um, that the base of it sits in and of course it of course it resembles the ascension pyramid because there's a a sphere on top of this and it's creating a toroidal field that torus around around this pyramid this pyramid's kind of a goldish copper looking one and then i was seeing it so it's presented in a couple of different ways um jumbo where it, it's shown that that copper gold pyramid up top and that was representing this this physical electromagnetic world and then it was showing another pyramid and that one has presented in different ways to me it, it's presented as being you know a reflection on the base where it's like a a bluish whitish more etheric looking pyramid but it has the same uh, physical characteristics is the one that's on top. It's the the pyramid with the ball and the in the toroidal field around it But to me, it's not necessarily that it's on the bottom because it's also presented That it's in the same space as this other one on the top So basically both sides of the ring would be the same that you would have that more of a physical one And then also the more the etheric one and that would be the same on both sides um, so but as far as that pyramid goes, as, as we mentioned in that description, is, is that, um, you know, when we do the reading with it, with Brenda, and we're looking at it, it actually, that pyramid will expand to about the size of, what is it, about the size of a room? Or is it the size of a home? To me, it looks like it expands larger than, than this room that I'm in. Um, so I guess it depends on the size of your space. And then also, that is innately you can with your own intentions expand the size of those pyramids um, and that's the beautiful thing about the tools is that we can then get in there and work with them and, and play with them and just using when you're in the heart space and you're using your imagination and your intentions that is when we can do these things in this quantum realm when we're not in the heart space and we're using imagination intentions, we might just be spinning our wheels a little bit. But when we're in the heart and you're using these tools, we can do really wonderful things like that, like expand that pyramid to the size of your neighborhood I'm seeing. Um, but don't let that limit you either. Um, is it possible to anchor the energy of Shungite into the future templates? Actually, Shungite has been in the templates all along. Um, we brought in uh way back when the galactic ascension ring came in we brought in the frequencies and properties of all the plant crystal mineral kingdoms of the planet into the ethereal templates so within all of the rings you can still access the frequencies and properties of shungite within the rings um we are making the elemental pendants again. So we're doing time studies on those right now. It'll still be a couple of weeks because, you know, we, we, we want to make sure that we always have um, all of our tools right before we release them. So the elemental pendants, they're, they're just going to be a small, you know, three quarters of an inch ring that I believe it's the chalice ring that we're using. I don't remember for certain. I'm gonna have to look at that, but it has shungite in it. It has um, shungite for the base of it, kind of like our water coasters. And then it has a small elemental in there and it has a little brass bale. Um, so anyway, just <laughs> I just thought about that, that the shungite, yep, we're gonna make another tool with shungite in it. Um, 
Let's see. Christine, can you please tell me the difference between the quantum healer and the other wands, or can you use it totally to replace them? I know you don't like to use the word potency, but can you discuss? Um, yes. And then give me just one moment, because I have to look up a word for another question here, which is narcolepsy, because I have forgotten more than I've ever learned. Um, so as far as the quantum healer goes, yes, the quantum healer can replace all the wands and gosh, we do need to make a product video of the quantum healer. But what, what I like to tell everybody is with the quantum healer, if you go to any of the wands that we create, you can actively use the quantum healer like you would any of the wands. So if there is the, um, the video for like the dragon wand on how to open that field or else the, all the different videos for the golden fire and light wands on how to anchor those columns of light, how to run energy, how to do the meditation for doing the clearing, the release work, going soul to soul with others. Everything that the Golden Fire and Light Wand does, you can do with the Quantum Healer, as well as the Shaman's Wand and the Fairy Wand. Um, so with the, with the Quantum Healer, though, unlike the Fairy Wand, where there is a specific Fae that comes with every one of the wands, with the Quantum Healer, it's more uh, along the lines of using it like the Dragon Wand, where you create a field and you can better connect to the fae in that way with with the uh, quantum healer so um and then christine asking about the word potency so you know that is one that i kind of need to sit down with as far as the potency aspect because to me um just kind of kind of right here between us it's potency to me is more how we interpret it in the physical um, but yet it's also beyond that. So people who are sensitive, um, might find that, that, um, that quantum healer is really potent, that it brings through a lot of energy. Um, but then there are some who are just not as attuned to that specific wavelength that they might not find it to be potent, that they might find it to be more gentle and a little bit less really tangible in the way that you can wear the quantum healer and it's going to shift your field. It's going to shift the things around you and it's going to be subtle. It, it's, it's, um, you know, kind of like the, the key pendant too, the, the Untak, the key pendant, that one has never been potent in a way that it um that you can feel it and and everything else it is more working in realms that are a lot more subtle and that's kind of like the quantum healer too is that for the majority of us it's going to be a very subtle energy but yet it'll still be tangible in in the way that it shifts our field and the field around us but yet it is subtle enough that it is hard to describe what it is that you feel those shifts as being. Um, so as far as the potency goes, these little two inch harmonizer rings, that's why I have that coupon code buzz for this 24 hour, $20 sale we're doing for just you guys who are here. Um, these ones are very physical. So to me, these ones are more potent than just a single chalice ring. Because to me, the chalice ring is not as potent because you don't get that same physical feel and reaction and response the, for the majority of us. Now, there are some who the chalice ring, it's over the camera. Uh, there's some of a, some people that do that chalice ring is potent to them. Um, I, I hope that kind of answers the question uh, along with uh, along what the term of potency and how we refer to it and use it. And like I say, Christine, I think that's one of the words that I just need to sit with and sit with Brenda with and try to find a definition that is 
that we can utilize here. So Leon, can you speak? Oh wait, so no, I'm sorry, I gotta go back to Savannah. Um, what would you recommend for narcolepsy? That's what I was looking up on my phone, my apologies. Um, so from what I see here, narcolepsy is a chronic sleep disorder characterized, characterized by overwhelming daytime drowsiness and sudden attacks of sleep. Um, um, yeah, I just met somebody out in the Twin Cities area when I was out there too that they, that because of the things that they've had going on for chronic illnesses related to, um, related to mold, that they have chronic fatigue. Um, and, and that one is, I've, I've been kind of thinking a lot about that one. And then also, but, but narcolepsy, um, from what it describes there and how I feel about it is, is um, that allow yourself to rest. Um, depends on, you know, if this has been going on for years or if this is something that has just been coming on in the past month or two, because if things have just been coming on with, with this um, over the past months, it's so much is going on with us in physical changes and it's it's one of those things that we keep getting you know told is to be easy on ourselves be gentle um sleep when you need it rest when you need it but then again um as far as sleep goes boy i've had some months here where i just haven't been able to sleep and here recently um i've been taking magnesium at night and that's allowed me to sleep um, because I haven't been able to sleep very well, but this past week I've been taking magnesium and it's been phenomenal for sleeping. CBD, the tools, nothing I really could get would assist that. But yeah, Savannah, as far as that question, what I would recommend for narcolepsy, um, and I would recommend a session with my sister, Brenda, the elders three.com. Um, because I really like I say, I'm very new to that concept and I really don't know um, what tools to even suggest or how to work with that. But that's something that Brenda, again, if you guys don't know about my sister Brenda with the elders3.com, she does distance phone sessions. She can talk to the innate of the physical body as well as the soul. And, um, she only charges 88 bucks for a session. Um, pretty phenomenal stuff. So anyway, that's that's what I would suggest instead of you know buying tools. Though, then again, um, if you were going to buy tools, the binary infusion pendant. Uh, this guy is 55 bucks, 58 bucks, something of that nature. Uh, 58. I would suggest. You know, if there's going to be any tool for anything, this binary infusion pendant, I feel is the way to go um, because I think there's still a sale on this right now for the next few hours to on our website. But um, the binary infusion pendant is the one that is working with that harmonizer ring on the physical and then that chalice ring. And that chalice ring is the one that that energy is the one that we see our soul going through and clearing manifestations, creations that no longer serve us. So the binary infusion pendant for just about all situations is, is that's the one I would suggest. But again, we're gonna do something here, here in a few minutes at the end of the show, which is basically using that energetics of the divine I am and um, doing the energy work with that. All right, so let's see. Leon, can you speak your experiences with the new Chalice Harmonizer Taurus? No, you know, I'll tell you the truth, Leon, I have not worked with that Taurus enough. Um, I've been keeping it in my space always. Um, you know, I take it with me wherever I go, you know, as far as if I go on the road or whatever. Um, you know, I've been just keeping that, that Divine I Am Taurus near me. Um, within my space because it does work within the space as well. Um, I can tell you though that I just hung up a pyramid above my bed. Finally, I have my my daughter's had one in her room forever. I hung one. I hung this up above my bed here this week. Maybe that's why I've been sleeping so well. 
<laughs> I forgot about that. But uh, when I first hung it up, I had to lay under it and I got knocked out for two hours. And then that night I slept. The next morning I woke up and I had to sit and write. And um, it's just, it to me, that has really brought through some pretty phenomenal shifts. And the um, that Harmonizer Taurus I know is holding a very similar space. Um, so no, I'm sorry, Leon, I really can't speak too much of my experiences with it, though I feel this weekend I'm gonna be doing a lot of playing with it. Um, Jumbo, what are the effects of the binary infusion pendant on our human DNA? Well, uh, sorry, I was gonna go off on a different tangent, but I won't I have a drink of tea here. Working with your DNA is something that's been in the all the tools since the galactic ascension ring then we upped it quite a bit when the harmony ring came along um way back with the galactic ascension ring and that has stayed in all the tools too is, is that we were seeing it as a dna scrubber that it comes in and clears things that are shifted within your dna that no longer serve you um binary infusion pendant though to me is shifting our dna greatly i mean this is exponential from compared to all the older tools that were created in the older energy systems for what it's doing with dna um you know we were even seeing slim even showed us slim sperling even showed us you know etherically about how we could create something way back when we only had the um you know the three original rings the sacred cubit the lost cubit and the 188 ring and even back then we were able to set them up in configurations with intentions to transform the dna of genetically modified seeds so that if you put seeds in that and then we move all that forward through everything that we've created since then so all the rings have always held the space for GMO modifications of seeds to bring a seed back to its original DNA, um, as well as seedlings. If you have a plant that's already sprouted, as far as for plants goes, by the time that plant comes to fruition and has its own seeds, that plant will shift back to its original DNA whether it's a strawberry spliced with a skunk or whatever it is, um, it is going to shift that plant back um, through its lifetime before it produces another seed. So that's why we always like to go throw these out in cornfields and things in Iowa as we drive by in all the GMO corn. Um, but as far as on human DNA goes, Yes, the, the binary infusion pendant would be one of the more powerful ones, as would, um, you know, the divine I am activator pendant, as well as the divine I am Taurus. To me, the divine I am Taurus would be the most powerful on working with shifting DNA. So if, if you got your first wonderful COVID shot, can't even call it a vaccine, if you get your first COVID shot, and I, I don't like going down those has talking about things that are mm, elicit strong emotions in people because of their belief systems um but for those of us who believe that it could affect your dna just like anything could a cold virus comes in scientifically viruses are shown to affect your dna so anytime that we've gotten sick from different flus and viruses and even a cold um, I just had this cold here this last week that's just been kind of off and on. My daughter got nailed full blown with it. Um, but we see that viruses co-create with us in the highest and best, especially when we're, you know, not just unconscious, that when we get a virus that we ask that it is coming through and assisting us in that highest and best, and it will do changes within our DNA. Um, but doing this divine I am activation, I feel is shifting our DNA instantly, as is just working with these divine I am tools. Um, so 
Sorry if I keep going on tangents today here, you guys. <laughs> um, oh, Valerie's the one asking the questions about Savannah. Um, so, yeah, I would certainly suggest um, with narcolepsy to work with my sister. Um, you know, that's, that's just what I would suggest. Um, let's see. Oh, Leon's asking about this. This is the Divine I Am Activator Pendant. And then, gosh, we need to, this weekend, okay, Sunday we'll have uh, this extra add-on ring that you can also get. So if you have the Divine I Am Activator Pendant, we will have this ring available. Hey, I think I got one in my pocket even. Um, which is... This one's a little bit heavier gauge, but basically it's a harmonizer ring that nests right into the back of the Divine I Am activator pendant. And it is a step up with it. You talk about potency on how you can feel things in the physical. Adding this harmonizer ring to the Divine I Am activator pendant is pretty flipping phenomenal. Um, so if you look for it by Monday, for sure, we will have this. Um, add-on pendant on the Divine I Am Activator page. So when you go to the, this pendant page, you'll be able to find this copper add-on ring that you can get to slip right in there. Um, uh, it's it's pretty tangible, phenomenal. Well, let's see, Christine, if the harmonizer ring and the chalice form the new bi pendant, which has a Divine I Am energy, what's the difference between it and the Divine I Am Activator pendant? Is it the movement energy that geometry is creating? Is it felt more in the physical? So, kind of goes back to the potency answer that the Divine I Am Activator Pendant, especially with this add-on ring, to me is more potent. I feel it more in the physical than the Binary Infusion Pendant. But the Binary Infusion Pendant and this Divine I Am Activator Pendant are energetically doing the exact same thing. They come in and they cookie cutter you out of a creation and shift you into a higher creation, dissolving all the other realities, all that other creation, it's uncreated. Um, so energetically, the binary infusion pendant, and that is why we're pushing this one so hard is because it's an affordable version of the Divine I Am Activator Pendant, and they're energetically doing the same thing for the wearer. Um, we just wanted to make something that was affordable to people instead of this, was it 399 bucks, I think, for this pendant um, versus that 58. So, yeah, it's... Um, so, yes, exactly, Christine. This one has just felt a little bit more on the physical. It's more potent, if you will, versus the binary infusion pendant, but they're going to take you to the same place. Um, JRS, how much stronger is the silver bi pendant than the copper version? You know, that's a good question that we have not, we, we haven't got an answer for yet. Um, now, some people have noted that the, the silver, well, let me take a step back there. For the chalice rings, to me, the silver and the copper feel exactly the same. For the harmonizer ring, though, the silver one, it has a different feel to it than the copper harmonizer ring. Some people feel it's more buzzy, um, is the response I've gotten from some people about it. Um, some people just feel it's more tangible, more potent, if you will, more tangible. Um, in the silver, but when you bring them together, as far as the binary infusion pendant goes, the copper versus the silver, they're going to be taking you to the same place. They're going to be doing the same thing. The silver, though, to me, does, there's a different quality, a little bit, just a little slight different quality to the silver one, which I do not know what that is. I can see it, but I cannot tell you. 
Um, and we, we still haven't done a reading to do a comparison on the two, but we know energetically they are exactly the same as far as what they do, where they take you. Um, but there is a slight difference in that. So, yeah, sorry, I cannot answer that question any better, JR. Uh, Leon, a silver field generator is much needed, perhaps in the harmonizer energy. Yeah, you know, um, we do have, you know, the little small golden fire generators in the silver, but um, yeah, I, th I think we'll be playing more in the silver here as, as time goes on. And um, these ones, the chalice bangles, um, the divine I am silver bangles, the heck of clasps in this thicker gauge. We're starting a time study for them today because people have been wanting this heavier gauge in the solid silver because our silver heck of clasps that are made out of this regeneration ring um, is a gauge lighter than these and they're also sterling silver so we are starting a time study today and so these guys should be out these these um chalice bangles should be out hopefully by the end of next week and um and available because people have been wanting that 0.99 fine silver in a chalice clasp so um we do have those coming along soon let's see Just going back and checking the chat and seeing what's happening here today. Ah, thank you, Randy, for putting in this coupon code for the harmonizer ring. Um, Let's see, Pamela is asking, hey Pam, awareness of being the tools helping to remedy and negate mold in buildings or tools that can reduce the impact of mold to our bodies. Um, oh, which reminds me of the DNA question too. So the DNA question about um, that I was gonna mention about how the tools have been transforming um, GMOs as well as GMO food. Um, it is gonna transform the harmful effects of GMO food when you utilize the rings with the food um, or the Taurus or, you know, the divine I am Taurus, any of that. So basically you can um, remediate the harmful effects of GMO food supplements, things like that. But then also as they're working on our body, they are remediating any of the harmful effects of GMO food that we may encounter. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. So then, Pam, as far as the tools to negate the mold, um, that's something that we've kind of looked at before and we have not gotten um, consistent answers to that question. Um, we do know that mold, a, a fungus, it is a field of consciousness um and just like a virus or a bacteria or a mold they are a field of consciousness and so with something that is of a lower vibrating thing um such as some of the you know, you know if you're low vibrating some of the molds some of the molds that are just totally non-beneficial for us to have in our space um we see that if you use a generator and you're using intention to shift the vibration of the space so that that mold can no longer exist there and then also having the intentions when you're working with those tools that it is um, basically shifting the harmful effects from it but you know it's it's one of those things that we don't get a consistent answer because sometimes that is there for a purpose and a reason. Um, anyway, yeah, no, I don't have a definitive answer on tools to work with mold in the environment. Um, Monica, how does the I am Taurus pendant compare to the 
Taurus pendant. Okay, so the Divine I Am activator compared to the Silver Taurus pendant. Um, so we see that Silver Taurus pendant as basically it was very much there as a as a as a um, as a gateway as a portal into that space beyond duality that that higher space um so that taurus pendant to me was the gateway the opening to that space where the divine i am activator pendant is fully within that space out of duality so the taurus pendant to me was taking us to to the gate allowing us to step in where the activator pendant is more pulling us through the gate into the other side um that has been the best way that i have been able to describe that um so as far as that taurus pendant goes we've discussed here on some of the 50 questions fridays before on how we are actually working on creating a smaller more intricate more detailed version of that silver taurus pendant um we're waiting on a third party who is custom creating a bail that spins that we can then put onto that new taurus pendant when we create it and when we create that new taurus pendant it is going to be the same gauge in the same size it's going to be this ring the chalice the silver chalice ring so it's going to be smaller, it's going to be lighter in weight, and we'll have a beautiful custom-made bale that has our logo and has um, Metatron's cube on one side in the feminine version, and it spins. And when we create that one, that specific Taurus is going to be the Divine I Am. Um, but don't throw away or count out the validity of your silver Taurus pendant because it is still a phenomenal pendant. Um, the Divine I Am Activator pendant, again, is just taking us through the other side. It's just making it easier. We can get to the same place with the Taurus pendant. Um, this one is just takes us there. It's simpler. Um, so anyway. Uh, let's see, Anna, I'm waiting for the everything ring. Any tips on how to start with it? Hmm, the everything ring. I really don't know what to tell you about that one. Should probably do a product webinar for this one too, for the everything ring. Um, he buzzes me. I don't, I don't even like to hold the everything ring. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but it's, it's still beneficial for a lot of people. Um, the everything ring, some of the ways that you can work with it is basically you can have the intention of creating a tensor field generator out there and it'll create one. It will then turn into this field that is broadcasting. Um, with the everything ring, I know that there is a way that you can go in the heart space and you can pull through the specific frequencies that you might need at any given time without it being so chaotic because i know a lot of people who have talked about the everything ring as being a very peaceful energy for them but i also have friends who have recently shared with me about how they use the everything ring for a long time but then it um it they they finally get to the point where i did too after wearing it for a while that all of a sudden after they took it off they realized how much chaos was within their field and then after they released that everything ring from their field then they noticed with using the chalice energy how much more of a shift it took place uh george what are the differences between slim spurling's products and twisted sage um slim came to slim came to us um in 2010 and started teaching me how to put together the tools as he passed on in 2007 um so he started teaching me how to create the tools. And then through the time, I started having the remembrances of what these beings were calling me a master builder. I was like, well, yeah, I can make 
I can make circles. No, it's a master builder of higher dimensional tools. So when Slim was alive, Slim, to me, did not have awareness of the etheric templates. He did not have the awareness of exactly what the higher dimensional tools were. So Slim was always working here on the physical, putting the beads on them, doing electroplating, um, shifting them into different configurations, um, and working with some of his friends who would use DC current with them, like Bill Reed and the, the, the GMAC. And the, he was always trying to amplify the effects of the rings on the physical. Um, but really, the higher dimensional aspects of the tools is where all the magic and miracles takes place with these tools. So the huge difference between um, the Slim Sperling products right now are still using those same sacred measurements that were used before which are great for a lot of people, but they have a ceiling to them. You, you can only go so far within those specific frequencies with the tools. Of course, we can all step higher than that, and we don't need the tools to step higher than those. But if I put on, if I started using my tools from when we first started, the 144 megahertz, the 177, the 188, it would pull me down. Um, they just don't. They they just don't feel good. Um, but yet, for a lot of people, they are still a beneficial tool. So, as far as the differences between um, the ones that are being created not by Slim, is that mm, most creators of tensor tools don't have the concept of a thorough templates of the higher dimensional creation of the tool before it comes in the physical. We worked with a lot of people on working with their, their higher dimensional aspects of the tools. And some people, they just really don't work with them. They allow them to be, mm, yeah, I can go down the roads of, of what, what other tool makers are doing. But um, besides the, the question in regards to the Sperling tools is that they're still great for some people, but definitely not everybody. Um, so the twisted sage tools are just they they work with they work with your higher soul self, and that's first started with the galactic ascension ring that we would see that when the human holds on to that ring that their soul also holds on to that ring, um, and so these higher dimensional aspects of the tools that we create that contain the frequencies properties of all the plant crystal mineral kingdoms the rays of light, the different modalities that we've learned through the years. Um, all this stuff, it's like a giant toolbox for the soul. And so um, basically they're like smart rings in that your higher soul self, your higher consciousness, if you will, is what is going to be basically bringing through, opening up whatever is in the highest and best for you through the field of the ring. Um, so anyway, um, let's see. I was going to buy some Wi-Fi rings for my large water jugs at home. Would you recommend the harmonizer instead? Would adding a chalice ring under it as well be better for water? Um, Christine, you can still totally use the, the, the Wi-Fi ring, which is the golden fire. It's still going to be bringing through phenomenal things for the water. And, and these are a nice, cheap, easy ring to use. This, this Wi-Fi ring, they're 18 bucks. Um, but yeah, I would almost suggest getting, oh yeah, I dropped it, getting one of the harmonizer rings and I'll show you the size in comparison between the Wi-Fi and the harmonizer ring. The harmonizer rings just itty bitty bit bigger, not much. Um, yeah, but it's a heavier gauge, um, the 12 gauge versus the 10 gauge. So with that, with that little sale we got going on here for the next, you know, 24 hours that um, on this two-inch harmonizer ring, I would almost suggest getting this one. But for water, really, either one of these is going to be phenomenal. Now then, as far as using the chalice ring with it, oh man, I love the chalice ring with my water. Um, it's it's, to me, the chalice ring with the water, it's it's just it's making it feel like the chalice. I mean, it's it's crisp and it's clear and it's just high vibrating. Um, so 
you know, I I would almost suggest using a harmonizer ring and any of the chalice rings with the water. Um, you know, as far as the chalice rings go, yes, we totally need to make some larger sizes. I don't think we're going to make a size that will work with this one, but we do have on the books, we're working on creating a large practitioner set of the um, binary infusion. So we will be creating the Divine I Am practitioner set and we're still working out the the sizes the cubit measures the measurements of those rings so um here that's still going to be a few weeks but um as far as working with water and you want a chalice ring i would use that larger copper chalice ring with the water um, and that's still a, a really wonderful affordable ring to use so the golden fire has traditionally been the one that i always suggest with water um, the chalice ring is a great addition. You can use the golden fire ring and the chalice ring together. Those two are phenomenal with the water. But of course, the harmonizer ring and a chalice ring is, is also going to be phenomenal. Um, again, it's just going to be small, subtle differences because once you're using that golden fire with the water, I mean, it's taking it to such a new, different level. Um, that when you're adding in that chalice or the harmonizer instead, it's still going to be at that really high phenomenal level, but there's just going to be, you know, those smaller differences, those more subtle differences. So, um, you know, really your Wi-Fi ring, the golden fire is still going to be great for the water and the harmonizer, either one, either one I would suggest. So, um, Let's see. All right. And George, is the Ankh of the now based on Hegel rune symbol? No, the the Untak, the key, the Ankh of the now time, um, that one is one that it came through from the starburst that uh, Simon Balaboa basically brought through the measurements and how to create the starburst. Then Bill Reed is the one who created the starburst from Simon's um, suggestion and, and drawings and such. Uh, Simon, he's an architect down in Colorado. Um, and then um, Bill Reed, he was one of the original people of Slim, and then Bill passed on. And then... Um, when we first started making the starburst, I was guided to drop one of the spines because it was it's like Untalk the key. Um, the starburst is. And so the starburst was much larger when we were creating them. But there's two different measurements there. There's uh, a smaller measure and a larger measure there. And so with the key pendant, we use the same size, but we drop one of the spines down into... Oh, it's a Fibonacci number. I don't even remember how that was came up with, but there was a certain drop down that it created. So the spine was longer. And with that key pendant, as soon as we created that, that's when I met this group of etheric mm, Egyptian looking beings who started calling me the master builder. And so that was when that Untak was first brought through. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of the things that we create that we, you know, and the work that we do, we don't look at the stuff that's been created, really. I mean, even all the new measurements that we're using, we don't use. The only one that we use anymore that is still connected to the previous creation on the planet would be the STU, which is the harmony ring, the balance and harmony ring. Um, and that STU measure, the standard 202 con unit, is something that we use in um, the, the, um, the quantum healers. That's the size of the brass tube. That's an STU measure fraction, as well as our golden fire and light wands use that um, STU measure as well. So, 
anyway, we, we usually don't base a lot of our tools on, on anything that's, that we know that's been in creation um we kind of in, in the conscious work that we do it's basically just connecting with with whatever comes through our awareness through our higher selves um instead of doing you know research things like that um let's see pam are there any of the tools that can help water that has known lead in it from pipes um you know so working with water in order for a tensor field to do physical restructuring of the water, uh, water needs to sit in a, in a container, let's say. Water needs to sit within the tensor field for anywhere from four to six hours for it to do physical restructuring. If you have a water line and that water line is flowing through the tensor field, through the ring, however you have that ring sitting, it is only going to work with, um, you know, clearing the clearing the energetics, clearing the um, the, the memory of water, um, and and bringing water more to its its connecting it to its consciousness more. But for the tensor fields to put the spin rates to do the physical restructuring of water, you need to allow water to sit within that space for four to six hours. And as far as working with the lead, I do not, I have no idea on how the tensor fields are working with lead. That might be something that you can maybe find at dancingwithwater.com. Uh, dance, dancing with water, um, dances with water. They, um, they are very much on that leading edge of, of the research and working with water. So they, they'd be the ones that I would suggest to, to look into. Um, let's see, another question. How do you recommend treating or charging pharmaceuticals with the tools? Um, so, you know, we have seen, because my, my daughter's mom's family was very much into the medical model. They wanted her to have her shots, and, you know, I allowed some of them when she was a baby, things like that. When you're working with anything in the pharmaceutical field, basically, we have not encountered anything that you cannot shift to become beneficial to you, whether that is just running energy into it or putting your your bottle within the ring. So even all the way back from the harmony ring to the golden fire um, to the harmonizer to the chalice, all these newer tools the regeneration ring, um, anything from the golden fire and beyond, even the, even the old balance and harmony rings, we're doing this with medications, with supplements. Basically, take your bottle, sit it in the ring for four to six hours, and have the intentions of it creating something that is beneficial to you. So pharmaceuticals have a very interesting energetic component to them. And that energetic component, my dad, when he was alive, he could not take pharmaceuticals. And it wasn't because of the physiological response. It was because of the energetic connection with them. And so that is how we first learned about how, you know, like he had to take gabapentin. And when he took gabapentin for his nerve uh, pain, we saw that in his field it was an energetic creation and so we we worked with pharmaceuticals and um gosh we we have a story on facebook from years ago on how we cl cleared pharmaceutical fields and um you know through consciousness work but you can do it with any of the tensor rings that you have of just sitting your your pharmaceutical or your supplement within the ring having the intentions of course, that harmonizer ring is fantastic to do. So is the Wi-Fi ring. Um, they're a great size. Just put it on there. Have the intention that they're all beneficial, and they are. Um, so, yeah, they, they're holding the space. When you have the intention, you're overriding, especially from in the heart, you're overriding your fear with those pharmaceuticals because if you're taking the pharmaceutical because you need it because of the physiological or or chemical component um but you're still in fear of it 
that is going to create something um, that's non-beneficial out of it. So if you can be in the heart, use the ring, use the tools, use your own energy, run your own energy into it even, um, you can shift them and know that you can shift them. And then they're going to be perfect to take. You'll be able to receive all the benefits from them. Um, let's see. Is a HECA clasp good for pain on fingers? So when you when you wear the HECA clasp or when you wear any of the tools near the location that you have the, the pain, the discomfort at, that is going to be better than wearing, um, let's say, if you're, if you're working with carpal tunnel, um, you know, then obviously having, well, not obviously, having that heck of clasp closer to the space of what it is that you're working on is going to do better than wearing a pendant um, because it's just, it's concentrating that energy in that area. So I know for a lot of people who, who have that, that hand issue, um, you know, for me, I cannot do the work that I do if I don't wear something on my wrists because of my, my hands. And so, because I've made tens of thousands of headaches with these things and, you know, <laughs> after you do that for a while, it gets to, you know, your, your hands, it kind of gets to your hands. So wearing the clasps, um, I can go all day and do the work. So most definitely. All right. So I see we are a little bit over our hour time. So we're going to um, move on from questions then. And we're going to do some, we're going to do some energy work. So I would like to walk you guys through the divine I am activation. Um, let's see about just getting a couple of the heady things out of the way so that we can jump into the meditation. Then when the meditation's done, we're just going to end the webcast here so that you can stay within your space. Um, this is something that you can do at any time. So the coolest part about the divine I am is it is something that you say to yourself to me it's, it's it's the key word that i say so you've heard of the divine blueprint the divine blueprint is um basically that which is of your highest dna uh, of everything so the divine i am is a huge step beyond that what i feel is that the divine i am is when you call in what I call calling in the divine I am. It's basically shifting you out of, let's say that you as the human, there's a bubble around you. Maybe it's your Merkava field. It's your bubble. That is your reality bubble. And when you use the divine I am, you say that I am the divine I am. Basically, it is taking you out of taking that bubble that is you that is your reality it is shifting you into a different reality a different creation and then all of this stuff here that was affecting you dissolves it is no longer a creation and so all we are doing is when we use those words that i am the divine i am after we do this activation here you can just imagine yourself like you know Sometimes, well, how we'll see it is that there's like this giant ring that comes and it just spins around you and it spins around your body. Or else you can imagine a bubble around your body or your Merkaba field, however it is that you want to see this or how it presents to you. But um, I'll, when I do, when we do the meditation, I'll describe it as a spinning ring in your bubble and how that spinning ring just comes in and cookie cutters you right out of that old sourdough and brings you up here into this new beautiful new space um have an acre of pain have a something that you're trying to release do this divine i am activation and just say i am the divine i am and allow yourself to shift so anyway, that's that's kind of the visual heady part of it here so that we don't have to get into that um, 
you know, as we move along. So, all right, here we go. We're going to jump through the meditation. So close your eyes if you wish. I find it easier to close my eyes when I'm doing the sacred space of the heart. Imagining within your physical heart is your light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the light of the earth. Breathing in that light of the earth right up through the feet and right into the heart. Next, connecting heart to heart with creation, source, soul, creator, God. Breathing in that light of creation into the heart. That third breath of the Trinity breath, we breathe in from both earth and sky, bringing both those lights in together, mixing those with the light of you within the heart. So that moves your consciousness from the head into the heart. As those lights expand within your heart, that's expanding your soul's light. So imagine that light of your soul and that light of earth and that light of creation expanding into every cell of your body, in between every cell. Now we're going to ask your soul to come in, put its hand on your heart, and we're going to activate the sacred heart, the golden fire. Now imagine that golden fire or that golden light traveling into every cell of your body in between every cell. Then it comes up to your throat and then right to your pineal gland, right in the middle of your head, right in the middle of the brain. We're going to light up that pineal gland, set it on fire with that golden light, that golden fire. Now imagine those infinities, the figure eight on its side, connecting the left and right brain hemispheres. Connecting, connecting all the way through. Now imagine that infinity going upwards to the higher mind. As that infinity goes up to the higher mind, that quantum mind, that's where we find that field of universal peace. Breathing in that universal peace down into the heart, into every cell of the body. This universal peace is perfect for bringing the body out of anxiety and into that calm, peaceful state. All right. Now imagine you still being up in that quantum mind. We're going to go higher to that space beyond the mind, to that field of all knowing. And we're going to go higher yet to the field of neutrality. Now we're going to bring in that energy of the chalice, that crystal clear, pure light. The soul has that. It brings that down into the physical. It just encompasses you. Now imagine that spinning ring around you or that bubble that's spinning around you. And it's just moving and it's just shifting you out of creations. So this is the divine I am. So you can just say to yourself, I am the divine I am. And allow everything to shift. I am the divine I am. And allow it all to shift. So when we're in this space, we're not trying, we're not doing, we are surrendering to the soul and we are allowing the release. We are allowing the release of creation that no longer serves us. We are allowing the shifts to take place. So when we do this, I am the divine I am. We have a soft intention already of something we want to do, whether it is clearing a discomfort, a pain, a life situation. But we don't want to hold that as a hard intention. 
We don't want to try to see it in a certain way, and we don't want to direct it on what we're releasing, what we're clearing, or what we are creating, because then we collapse the field. This is about allowing and surrender, surrender to the soul. So all of you wonderful divine creators, thank you for being here. We'll see you next time.